Hello there, remember me? Embarrassingly, it's been about three months since my last game review. What can I say other than real life got in the way? Various things happening, including my 40th birthday. And one thing I do want to mention is this t-shirt that my dad got me for my 40th birthday, which has got loads of BBC Micro heroes and villains on it. Hopefully you can spot a few you recognise there. That was really cool, so thanks dad for that. So let's get on with the game review, the first one for three months as I said, so you'll excuse me if I'm a little bit rusty when I'm doing the review of this game. But it's a game for the PC Engine, don't have any packaging for it, and the game's already loaded on the screen behind me, it's called Cybercross. So let's have a look at the fact file. Cybercross was released in 1989 in Japan, published by Face and developed by ITL Company. The price I paid was £8.89 for a loose who card, which was not that long ago. The current going rate is roughly the same, £8 to £10 for a loose cartridge and £10 to £15 for a box copy if you prefer that. So, no packaging to look at, let's have a look at the game. So here we have a little bit of an intro to the game. It doesn't really tell you a lot to be honest. There's some text there in Japanese which obviously I can't read. And some kind of a star field. And I assume these are the baddies. With some kind of dark overlord. And this is our hero with the blue hair. Who again is saying some stuff. And he can turn into what looks like a Power Ranger. And he can kind of power himself up and kick people. And punch them it seems. And there he is with a sword. And that's about it. There's the title screen. There are no options in this game at all. In fact, it's gone back straight back into the intro. So uh, I'll just press the run button. But there's no options. There's no changing the controls or anything like that. It's purely press the run button and get going. So let's get on with it. So as you can see, it's a side-scrolling game. It's a uh, Beat, beat them up primarily, or there are some weapons to pick up later on. Uh, these things come along periodically and they're power-ups. As you can see, straight away I've powered up and I'm now in a red Power Ranger type suit. He's not a Power Ranger by the way, he's a cyber warrior or something. He's got some quite dramatic music when he's powered up. Thus far nothing too challenging, the enemies are all kind of insectoid in appearance, be they walking enemies with insecty faces or uh, flying enemies that actually are insects. They don't kind of turn around and come back and try and attack you for the most part, and they just walk on a set path. Oh, you got me. Picked up that power up, it's just points I think. So yeah, they just kind of walk along and walk off the screen if you don't kill them. So there's not really any kind of AI with the enemies for the most part. Certainly these uh, sort of drone enemies at the beginning make very little effort to uh, attack you. Or sort of zero in on you. Okay, so I've powered up again now and now I've got a sword. Which allows me to do a bit more damage. The, the uh, dark blue enemies, by the way, have got guns. As you can see, his suit's a bit more dramatic now as well. It's got some... Uh, boots and shoulder pads and stuff. So yeah, one thing you can do is just walk along the platform and avoid stuff. This game reminds me a little bit of the 1988 game from Data East, Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja. It's got that kind of uh, 2D view but you're able to jump between layer uh, levels up and down the screen so um, there's other reasons why it reminds me of that game which we'll come to later but thus far it's pretty bland the graphics are alright I suppose the main characters graphics are pretty good the backgrounds are pretty bland so you get some of these flying enemies that drop bombs on you or try to but they're quite easy to avoid for the most part and that's the uh, evil lady who sends some dragonflies at you, which is best to duck. Thus far, not a lot happening. It's just fairly um, 
what can I say, fairly boring scroll across the landscape with not a lot happening. Oh, I've changed to the blue guy now. So there are other suits, as you can see this one's a blue one, this one gives me a different weapon which in this case is a, a gun which makes it even easier to dispose of these fairly basic enemies especially the ones that shoot at you if you take a few hits then what does happen is you lose the weapon and then eventually you lose the suit as you can see I've now got hit a couple of times by the flying ones which is probably the most annoying of the enemies and as a result I've lost the gun and that is, oh, it's extra energy. It could be useful later on. So along it goes, and we've got some kind of wormy things that kind of scroll along the bottom of the screen towards you quite quickly. But again, nothing too challenging to dispose of thus far, although I've got hit a couple of times. There's a lot of health power-ups on this level as well, which uh, Fairly beneficial. And I think I'm approaching the end of the level now, yeah. So uh, the bad lady's set one of her minions on me, and this is why it re reminds me a little bit of Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja as well, because we've got this fire breathing enemy. You might recall at the end of the first level of Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja, you get a uh, Kornov, who's a fire breathing enemy, obviously. What I haven't shown you so far is you can power up your suit and when the guy lands close to you, unleash a spinning kick on him. This guy's not too difficult to get rid of. There you go, he's gone. So, got some points for remaining health and time at the end of the level and on we move to the second level. Which is pretty much more of the same. Uh, that's the green power up which gives you a green suit, which has got a really useless weapon, it's like this little boomerang which if you hold it down, goes further across the screen but um, it's, it's kind of rubbish, it's kind of slow and uh, difficult to direct exactly how you want it as you can see these things are coming along and I'm not really killing them, they're just kind of running into me and again this is another reason why it reminds me a bit of Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja because you've got these trucks you can jump on, although in this game they're not actually moving along like in the second level of Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja they're kind of a lacklustre version of that. Oh, this is good. Back to the red suit with the sword as well. As you can probably tell, the music hasn't changed at all, it's exactly the same as the first level. And most of the enemies haven't changed either, although there are some different enemies coming up a little bit later in this stage. I'm actually not going to collect that green one because the green one, as I've already said, is shit. I seem to be walking through a park or something. The, the backgrounds are a little bit better on this stage. Here's some slightly different enemies, kind of ant guys, crawling along at you, but they still only take one hit to get rid of. Uh, so yeah, I'm in some kind of park. We've got some nice fairly nicely drawn bushes and so on, but again, they're not very impressive backgrounds. Ah. I've no idea what that power up is. Doesn't really seem to do anything, maybe it's just points, I'm not sure. That one was definitely points. So 
So none of the enemies thus far are particularly challenging. This is where it does get a little bit more challenging though because uh, this guy throws grenades at you. Uh, and a couple of hits from them and you're well out of energy so we'll be a bit more careful here. It's handy, got the sword. The uh, flying ones are by far the most annoying, the most difficult to avoid. So here we come to the end of level 2, and this is as far as I've got in the game so far, because this guy is really hard to hit. Although I've done pretty well there, that's actually the most hits I've ever got on him. But he kind of goes flying off backwards and forwards, you have to jump over him as he comes towards you, and then eventually he'll land again. Hopefully. Oh. Or he'll just keep diving at you, in which case you've got no chance. I did kind of get a hit in there, I suppose. But as he hits you, you get injured. There we go, he's coming back towards me again. Well, that's the most hits I've ever got on him. Am I actually going to get to the third level? Or I'm just going to get hit by him? I need one more shot at him. Oh. Backwards and forwards he flies forever. Oh, I'm not getting any hits on him. Oh, he's going to kill me. I know he is. No, yeah, he's got me. So, yeah, I've still not managed to get past this guy. And that's it. Game over. No continues. No additional lives other than the one you get with the health bar and press the uh, run button and you're back to the menu and that's why I've got no desire to carry on playing through the game. I do not want to play through the boring le level and a half before I get to the tricky bit towards the end of the second level. Basically, the game is rubbish. It's really dull, boring, graphics aren't that great, sounds not that great, enemies aren't that interesting, it's all just really dull. And so I'll be selling that one and that's the end of this first review for quite a few weeks hopefully the next review won't take quite so long and also will be of a better game if you only knew the power of the dark side two one zero